Welcome to the Mina Surge podcast, the ultimate source for all things Web3 and fintech related in the Mina region. Powered by Fintech Surge and Future Blockchain Summit, taking place at Dubai Harbor, October 15th through 18th, alongside Expand North Star and in association with Jitex Global. We're here with Badr Kaluti, and it says here you're Regional Director of Growth and Operations at Binance, obviously the largest crypto exchange in the world. Tell us a little bit more about your role and what does that mean to be Regional Director of Growth and Finance, uh, Growth and Operations at the largest crypto exchange in the world. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here today. Um, so yeah, look, in COVID, my conviction for the Web3 space started to skyrocket. And I eventually found myself gravitating more and more towards the space. And, and today I'm fortunate to be with Binance. Uh, as you said, I'm a head of growth and operations for the region. And, and that's a very exciting, dynamic role, right? Um, so we, we cover 20 markets uh, across MENA specifically. And as you know, it's a very diverse region. Uh, it's very fragmented. So if you really want to unlock its potential, you have to stitch it together very carefully, right? And so as part of our strategy, and obviously we have a big playbook, but you know, I'll spotlight a few uh, of the ones I think are the most important, is that we take a very hyper-local approach to the market as opposed to like a one-size-fits-all approach. And uh, with that, we're able to cater to the nuances of the region and really resonate uh, with our audience. The second is that you know, we are very user focused as an organization. And so we put the user front and center of everything that we do. So that means we wanna make sure that the funds are safe on the platform, that our services are top notch, and that we're always listening to uh, feedback uh, from the users so that we can continuously improve. Um, and then it's also important that we're able to leverage the breadth of the Binance uh, product offering. Like there's sometimes you know, a misconception that Binance is only an exchange. That's not true. You can buy and sell crypto, correct? But we are essentially a Web3 ecosystem. And with that, we're able to offer a variety of products, whether it's NFTs, Earn, Academy, etc. And that's particularly important in a bear market where sometimes a user is more averse to trading in, in these times we now have other ways we can engage with our customer base besides just buying and selling crypto. Um, another important element here is that we are very much engaged with the community. Um, you know, for us, it's important to earn trust. Uh, and in fact, that's, I think that grassroots approach was part of our DNA since day one. And I think is one of the main reasons why we are today, as you mentioned, the largest exchange in the world. Um, so, you know, if, can relate all these uh, things together for you. It's translated into tremendous growth for us here in MENA. Um, happy to say that since 2020, uh, we've been able to 20x our user base. So it's been very exciting to be a part of that story and, uh, and kind of you know, bring in the Web3 space into MENA. And it's not just, I would say, an element of copy paste anymore. It's a new paradigm where we're actually innovating in a new technological trend from this region. So it's super exciting to be here and be a part of the biggest exchange in the world. That's amazing. So 20x since 2020 and you operate in 20 markets. <laughs> I guess you could say. The correlation. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's your next tagline for Binance. Yeah, there you go. You heard it here first. Um, so, so you're talking about you know, hyper-localizing your product, your communications, your service offerings. Um, you know, obviously you've done a great job in the MENA region and anybody that's been here, anybody that understands the MENA region understands it's a very unique place compared to the rest of the world, especially Far East or even the Western countries, it's, it's very unique. And even within the region, it's not all the region is exactly the same, right? Tell us a little bit about how do you localize your product offering for the MENA region specifically and what sort of successes and accomplishments you've had in doing that? Yeah, no, that's a great question. Um, so yeah, localization is key across the board, right? So first we started with uh, complying with regulations locally, right? Uh, for certain places like Dubai and Bahrain, we were amongst the first to set up and operate a local exchange, uh, which is great, right? So uh, this is again, uh, pioneering the industry with a regulated framework as opposed to the previous ways of how it has been done. And this is the future of the industry. Um, we also make sure to localize our product offering, right? So. All our products and services are available in Arabic. Uh, we also have 24-7 customer support available in Arabic, uh, 
uh, to help our user base. And uh, we also make sure that all our marketing campaigns are localized, right? We want to cater to the specific demographics of the region. As you mentioned, it's, it's not a homogeneous uh, setup like you do in the States, for example, where the cultural values are very much in line and, and the way you speak to users is very similar. MENA is a combination of 20 countries, uh, different ethnicities. And so, you know, a place like Dubai has over 190 nationalities alone, right? So you have to be very dynamic and tactical uh, with your marketing campaigns. Um, we also make sure that we localize um, our, uh, our partnerships, right? So we have strategic partnerships with, you know, uh, banks, merchants, um, payment processors. And this is just to add that extra le level of convenience and familiarity uh, to our user base. Um, so yeah, I think those have been great initiatives that really allowed Binance to kind of cement itself regionally and, and, and uh, speak to, to users on a, on a local level. Yeah, that's great. And one, one of the products that you were, you were talking about before was you know, you're educating um, the audience a lot more. And I think that's one of the challenges that we've seen a lot in the crypto and Web3 spaces, you know, a lot of uncertainty, mainly through lack of knowledge, right? Um, and as we know that we're in a little bit of a bear market for a while, kind of an extended uh, bear market, and now is the time to, to sharpen tools and to become a lot more familiar with the product so we can take advantage of whenever we go back into a bull market. Um, tell us a little bit about how you're overcoming, you know, especially this region's perhaps um, you know, lack of knowledge or are the, the users that haven't quite gotten there yet as far as crypto and Web3 understanding. Okay, that's a great question. Uh, with the emergence of any new technology, uh, there's a tendency for it to be quite esoteric, meaning that a very small percentage of the population will relate to that new technology, right? Therefore, education plays an instrumental role in driving mass adoption. So for us at Binance, we pay a lot of attention to this aspect, right? So for example, we launched Binance Academy. It's an online library of hundreds of articles translated in 20 plus languages where users can come in for free and learn about everything to do with Web3 and blockchain, right? We also do um, a lot of partnerships with universities, uh, whether it's uh, academy workshops physically or offline uh, to cater to, to college students because you find a high degree of affinity with students in college and crypto because they realize that future job creation opportunities are going to come from within the space, right? Uh, we also host a variety of AMAs uh, weekly, right? Covering different topics. AMAs, ask me anything, right? So users can come in and we talk about hot topics, we talk about safety, we talk about new trends, and we find a lot of engagement with that. Uh, we also just recently launched something called uh, Blockchain for Everyone. It's a curated crash course translated in Arabic where you can learn about the basics of Web3. And then at the end of completing the course, you get a NFT Binance certificate uh, that you can use uh, to kind of, you know, validate that, hey, you know something about the space. And then lastly, uh, you know, we also realized that there's varying user personas when it comes to Web3 and Mina, as you correctly mentioned. So you have your crypto newbies and you have your crypto OGs, right? Um, so for us as a product, it's important that we cater to both ends of the spectrum. So within our platform, you have Binance Lite and you have Binance Pro. With Binance Lite, it's easy for the new, you know, the new joiners to onboard, navigate, and use uh, the product because it's catered to that audience. With Binance Pro, it's a more feature-rich uh, part of the uh, platform, and it's catered to the sophisticated investors. Yeah, absolutely. And, and that's something that us at Future Blockchain Summit, we, we really try to, to cater to both ends of the spectrum as well, right? We have the, the proper technologists that just really love the technology behind blockchain, the use cases that may be over other people's heads or maybe just not even interesting to them at all. Whereas we also want to make sure it is user friendly for those that are not quite necessarily there yet. We want to make it something exciting for them and understand how does this apply to you kind of on a daily basis, on a yearly basis? How can you improve your life through this technology? Do you feel like it's difficult as you know, someone in charge of growth to, to cater to both ends without alienating one or the other? Um, it's not so much difficult, but it just requires that you pay a, a conscious effort to realize that that's a fact you have to contend with, right? And once you do that, you just tailor your strategies accordingly and you'll achieve that goal. Uh, I think, you know, a perfect example is what I just mentioned now with the light and pro approach. 
um, we we able to you know uh, adapt our, our service to to the varying uh, you know I'd say degrees of user education in the space. For sure. So products that 100% cater to this one and 100% cater to this one, so that way neither uh, neither audience feels like yeah. they're not being treated well. Yeah, and, and you have to think about it as a, as a journey. Like you can't over, I mean, the concept itself is relatively new and there's so many things being built on top of this uh, you know, new technology that it, you have to find a way to kind of you know, orient the user from the beginning in a way where it's kind of bite-sized and it's not too overwhelming. And then once they get more comfortable, you kind of widen the menu a bit of the various things that you can do in this space. For sure. So that's the way you got to think about it. Yeah. And you, you mentioned that you kind of really started to get excited about crypto and Web3 in 2020. And obviously since 2020, Binance has seen a 20x uh, growth. What are some of the things that you've seen in the region or even in Dubai specifically that has really kind of cemented its place as the crypto hub, you know, the Web3 hub of the Middle East and, and a big player in the world? What are some of the things that you're seeing that has happened recently or is coming up in, in recent time? Okay, so I'll, uh, I'll zoom out and start with what I feel is exciting uh, with the space in general, right? So there are two things that, that drives the crypto market, right? In the short term, it's driven by the global liquidity cycle, right? So that's highly volatile. But over the long term, it's driven by network adoption and regulations, all right? With regulations, this is how the story goes. An entrepreneur will come with a new idea, establish product market fit, and then in an, in an ambiguous environment where the rules aren't very clear. And then after a certain level of scale, the regulator will come in, play catch up, and establish the rules of the game, right? This is what's happening right now, right? It's super exciting. Um, and, and Binance is actually the largest exchange in the world with the most licenses in the world. We're at 18 now. And this is very important because proper regulations will pave the way for mass adoption and open the door for institutional capital, right? Uh, most recently, BlackRock uh, announced their uh, spot Bitcoin ETF, the filing of it, right? So this is a massive milestone for the space that you have the largest asset manager in the world essentially stamping uh, credibility onto the, uh, the entire Web3 ecosystem, right? Uh, and you also had very recently a lot of favorable court rulings uh, that have come in the favor of crypto and Web3. So giving you signs that you know, there is light at the end of the tunnel and hopefully uh, good things are coming. Uh, when it comes to the network adoption piece, this is where you need to solve the problem of, hey, where are the users, right? And you need use cases to bring in these users, right? So essentially, it first started off with Bitcoin kind of being a new store of value, call it digital gold if you want. Um, and then you moved on to Ethereum, which brought you DeFi and NFTs. But today, there is a wide range of you know, protocols that are putting forward very interesting uh, utilities and use cases. For example, you have the potential of tokenizing real-world assets. Um, you have the decentralized model being applied to, you know, uh, cloud storage, uh, GPU processing, gaming, liquid staking, uh, the list goes on and on and on, right? One thing I would like to clarify is that a lot of people think Web2 is meant to replace Web3. That's not the case, right? Web3, with the merits of blockchain, can do certain things more effectively and efficiently than what Web2 can do today. And that's the area where you see a lot of opportunity uh, for that use case. And it's also important to know that, you know, the young talent today is flocking towards the space. And then there's a lot of capital coming in to back those uh, entrepreneurs. And so eventually you will get those killer apps, you know, that come on chain and bring mm -hmm. this wave of a billion plus users very similar to what Instagram, Facebook, YouTube did for Web2 in the mid-2000s. Yeah, that, that's amazing. And that's what I get most excited about when we have these conversations. And um, back to Future Blockchain Summit is we, we try to not just talk only about crypto, only about, you know, I'm going to invest into this crypto or NFT, and then hopefully I make more money out of it. We actually try to talk about the use cases because that's something that I think that whenever we, we hear about the hype of, you know, so-and-so bought this crypto, so-and-so bought that NFT, this is up, this is down, we forget that there's technology behind it and that there's use cases that actually will, will take off far above and beyond that quick buck that we've seen so many people that are, that are able to do it. 
So, so let me give you an example and actually tie it back to Dubai, right? So today we have about 400 million users in Web3 world, right? Seven years ago it was less than 50, so tremendous growth. And Dubai actually has the highest rate of crypto adoption globally. The UAE, not just Dubai, has the highest rate of crypto adoption globally where 28% 20, of the population actually own crypto, cryptocurrency. Wow. That's amazing, right? And that's really a testament to the leadership and, and the vision they had for this place. So Dubai holds a very significant uh, role, I think, in, in, in the crypto space and the Web3 industry because, you know, they chartered, I say, yeah, I think they... they they established regulations for the space in uncharted territory. This playbook did not exist anywhere, right? Everyone was kind of figuring out how to do it, and Dubai was amongst the first to get it done, right? And as I said, regulations are a very important piece for the future of this industry. Uh, and like you said, it's also a, a, a global hub, right? Um, and so by virtue of establishing this precedent, other markets started to follow suit, and we've seen others follow the UAE to regulate this space. So it's a contagion effect and provides positive momentum for the space. And um, as a global hub, they've also managed to pull in all the blue chip Web3 players, uh, all the, uh, you know, I wouldn't say all, but a good portion of the entrepreneurs into the space uh, have all set up shop here. And, and for the first time, as I mentioned earlier, as opposed to the region being uh, importers of technological trends, we're now in a unique position where we can start to export it. And for me, that's just super exciting and kind of very different to how it was pack, before. As you the could pack. Say. It's, yeah. it's, it's quite exciting. That's amazing, especially for such a new country, you know? Yeah. So a lot of the things that we've done, you know, all the records that Dubai has, all the records UAE has, for us to be leading the pack in something completely brand new, not breaking someone else's record, but actually creating a new record that others have to kind of catch up exactly. to. And, and so globally, you know, as, as we mentioned that, you know, like crypto goes up and down, we have a bear market, we have a bull market, et cetera. Is the acceptance of crypto becoming more skeptical or are more people actually saying, this is a good thing, I'm starting to understand it a lot more globally, are people accepting crypto more? Yeah, look, I think there's a, 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 a nice quote from Gandhi that is very applicable to the situation. About crypto, right? yeah. Well, I'm going to relate it to crypto, but he goes, he says, first they ignore you, then they laugh at you, then they fight you, then you win, mm. all right? I personally think we're in the fight you stage. And we've seen this before. Numerous uh, companies who had disruptive technologies had to go, go up against you know, regulations, governments, uh, established unions, etc. Uber with ride hailing, Amazon with e-commerce. And so it's nothing new. Uh, so this is where we are with crypto today, right? So you have to be patient. And you have to understand that if you relate it to the internet, crypto adoption today is where the internet was in 1999. The total market cap of the entire industry, of the whole industry, is around one trillion. That's one third of the market cap of just Apple alone. So we're relatively still quite early. And you just got to think about it that way. You just have to, you know, I guess, sit back, relax. I know it's been a turbulent ride, right? Fasten your seatbelts, but ultimately we should arrive to the intended destination, right? Uh, and and me personally, I think. Crypto is here to stay, right? Web3 and blockchain have proven themselves to be a powerful solution that, is, that can drive efficiency, that can uh, transfer value more effectively, and can add a layer of trust, transparency, and immutability to any sector, not just finance. So I'm very bullish, personally. <laughs> and honestly, I think that we are to the point where if, if they are fighting us, if we are in that fighting stage, that means they recognize us. They That's recognize true. that this is something to either accept or to fight. Exactly. And you know, the fact that it has been around for quite a minute now is not a, a new technology anymore. It's not the new kids on the block. It's the kids that are on the block that we thought were new, but they're not really going away. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it might be annoying, but now it's like, okay, now we actually have to... Can't beat them, join them. Yeah, right? we actually have to fight them. And yeah. it actually is something. And I think that it is, it's pretty clear with how much, you know, Web3 and blockchain are making its way into different industries and different arenas that is not going to go anywhere. They're not going to reverse back and say, nah, let's just go back to Web2 after so many industries have already yeah. adopted Web3. So again, if you We're at the point of no return. Yeah, if you can't beat them, join them, and 
I think is very clear that it's not going anywhere. If you're not involved in this, then you're just going to miss <laughs> an, an amazing opportunity to be a part of something at the ground level that uh, honestly, it, it, it's been years since this has been in the making and we're still at an opportunity to get in on a ground level. Look, history doesn't repeat itself, but it often rhymes, right? We've all heard that saying before. And it's exactly the same thing with the internet. Like I go back, it's, okay, the internet was disruption at a more massive scale. Uh, but it was the same concept. People doubted the internet. There were the naysayers, people who resisted the internet. But eventually, the, the technology is so powerful that it made its way. And look where we are today, right? So blockchain is a similar dynamic here. Like not at the same scale, but pretty significant. For sure, for sure. And I mean, with how much the internet did grow, blockchain is literally web three. It's the yeah. third generation of exactly. the internet. So we can only expect it to be just as big, if not quadruple the size very, very soon. Yeah, uh, the reason why, look, I'll tell you, I mean, it's, it's not, uh, you know, there are certain elements of Web 2 where Web 3 just does it better, right? And it makes sense to use the power of blockchain and the values of blockchain. And there's some areas where it doesn't, right? And you continue to have, you know, traditional Web 2 ways of doing things. So they're not mutually exclusive. Web, like you said, it's just an evolution of Web 2 in certain areas uh, where it makes most sense. Mm, that's great. And of course, you know, Binance is one of the main sponsors of uh, Future Blockchain Summit. I was hoping you could maybe give us a little bit of a sneak peek into what can we expect from Binance within the next few months? Anything that you have cooking that we can kind of expect yeah. to see at Dubai Harbor? So, I mean, we've been very much focused on building, right? So there's an uh, exciting uh, list of products that we're going to be launching uh, over the coming quarters. And um, we just recently launched our copy trading feature, uh, which is a, a very uh, interesting tool that allows users to mimic the portfolios and trading strategies of more advanced traders. Um, so that's very exciting. So we're excited to kind of promote that and push that and demo that because it's, uh, it's a great way to kind of educate, it goes back to our topic of educating, uh, where users can learn from you know, uh, the pros uh, and develop their own trading strategies down the line. Um, we're also interested to kind of showcase and uh, talk about the launch of our Dubai entity, uh, which is recently launched, and uh, you know, that's uh, going to be the center point of uh, uh, the, uh, the summit for us. And uh, we also have a few other events. Um, Binance Blockchain Week uh, is also happening in, uh, in November, and that's our annual event. Which your equivalent of future blockchain summit that we host and, and this year it's in we had it in dubai uh, a few years ago and now we have it in istanbul so we're gonna be very busy very yeah. exciting few months coming up that's exciting so a lot of things to keep an eye on for binance within the next few months and especially at future blockchain absolutely summit. looking forward so to that's future excited blockchain. You know, and everybody. the new format of future blockchain summit is going to be uh, very interesting for sure new yeah. format alongside expand north star 1800 Perfect. startups at dubai harbor a completely new innovation festival that we're, we're hosting alongside obviously powered by Jitex. Looking forward to it. So, um, so we, now we know what we're excited to see from Binance at Future Blockchain Summit, but obviously this is not your first time being one of the key sponsors of Future Blockchain yeah. Summit. What, what do you get excited about seeing every year at this massive blockchain event that we host in Dubai? Yeah, look, we're very excited to be back. I think uh, just the curation of uh, the various players in the industry gathered together in a beautiful venue is super exciting. And anyone in this space uh, is going to kind of, you know, find a great networking opportunity, great way to talk about, you know, what we've been working on and listen from others. Uh, and I think you provide the very entertaining uh, couple of days where, you know, there's a lot on offer in terms of content, entertainment. Uh, and so I'm very much looking forward to that new format where it's a bit more um, condensed and, and focus to the goals we want to achieve out of it. Whereas, you know, the, the past events have been great, uh, but it's just, you know, uh, as part of the bigger Jitex, you kind of get uh, a bit distracted with everything that's going on. And now we can just, you know, have our own space for the industry and kind of focus on uh, quality networking, as I would say, uh, and uh, talk about everything blockchain and crypto. Amazing. We're super excited to have you there. We're super excited to see what you're un unveiling and, of course, all the panel presentation that you're going to be on as Looking well. Looking forward. So see you at Dubai Harbor. Looking forward to it. Summit. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks a lot. See you soon. Bye.